Hello there and welcome to my channel, I'm Tom Rouse and today I'm going to be talking about the end of the Premier League season. If you've been watching my channel for quite a long time you'll notice that I only talk about Wolves but I'm trying to branch out ready for next season and get ready for what could be an exciting time for my club and many others as well. So today saw the end of John Terry's career at Chelsea. Uh, he was substituted off in the 26th minute to represent the number that he played for Chelsea with which I thought was absolutely pathetic. And what has come out after the game is that apparently David Moyes was asked about this before the game and Sunderland were asked to put the ball out on the 26th minute to enable John Terry to go off. <sighs> Not for me. Over the last 10, 15 years or so, we've seen a number of one-club players leaving their clubs and the number is getting smaller and smaller. And John Terry could be one of the last players who play for one of the top clubs through his whole career. There's no denying that he's had a very successful career. He's won four Premier Leagues, he's won a number of FA Cups and other tr trophies. He didn't win the Champions League. He's taken the spotlight after what was a fantastic season for Chelsea, after such a dismal season last season. And, uh, Conte should be really, really praised for what he's done with Chelsea, particularly when they changed the three at the back. I thought they have been great and to have watched them this season as well in the FA Cup against Wolves. They were one of the strongest teams that I think I've ever seen. They just were completely in control. Second of all, Harry Kane scored yet another hat-trick, his fourth hat-trick of the season. The only player to have ever scored more hat-tricks in the season was Alan Shearer in 95-96. And he's proved that he's going to be one of the top top players for Tottenham if not England if not the Premier League for the next 10 years or so after breaking onto the scene in a 2014-15 season he's been consistently one of the top scorers in the Premier League he's become Spurs' main man and I hope that with the transition now to the new stadium via Wembley I think next season could be really tricky for Tottenham but hopefully if they can keep hold of Daly Alley as well. I'm sure Kane will stay because he's a Tottenham boy, but perhaps his head would be turned if a big side like Real Madrid or something came in for him, but I can't see that happening at the moment. The other thing that happened today in the Premier League was that Liverpool managed to secure their top four spot after they beat Middlesbrough. It looked at half-time as if it might be a little bit of a nervous second half, but goal just before half-time and then two goals afterwards saw them comfortably over the line, which means that Arsenal are not in the Champions League. You can't take away from the success that Arsene Wenger has had over the last 20 years, 21 years. He has taken Arsenal from mediocrity in the mid-90s to, if you consider that this is the first time that Arsenal have not been in the Champions League for 20 years, that is an incredible record. But, in truth, it will become the expectation that Arsenal should be in the top four. That's the very limit that's fair where we should be all the time and if we're not there then it's a fake they have still got the chance now to win the fa cup which could probably see as a successful season then Wenger was trying to put a bit of a spinner on it today as well by saying that usually if you finish with 76 points that you will get into the top four it's not the case this season it's been a competitive top six and it'll only be the same next season with Man United looking to be stronger as well. Final thing I wanted to talk about today was Manchester United and Jose Mourinho in particular. I thought he's been absolutely petty and pathetic over the last couple of days with the team selection from today. All right, justified perhaps because they won the game, but I thought it showed a disrespect to the league and the other clubs in it. It's a 20 team competition. Yeah, everybody has to play each other twice. Well, he showed complete disrespect. He was very, very fortunate that Palace didn't have anything to play for. But if you remember seven years ago, this Christmas, Wolves played against Manchester United. In fact, three days after they'd beaten Spurs at White Hart Lane, and three or four days before they were due to play Burnley at home, and Mick McCarthy decided to make 10 changes. Now he was fined, or the club was fined for that decision. And I wonder whether that would happen again now to Jose Mourinho. I do understand that it's a big game for them. It's not the biggest game in their history. You know, they've won the treble. They've won two Champions Leagues in my lifetime. They've been one of the most successful Premier League teams ever top flight teams ever. So to call a Europa League final the second tier uh, European competition the biggest game of the club's history I think is completely disrespectful to the history of the club. And for that reason I really hope that Ajax win. 
you could argue that perhaps they've done the same sort of thing over in Holland. They played a team last weekend with an average age of 20, which is astounding. And there's some, they've got some real potential in there as well. It's going to be a tricky one to call. Let me know if you want me to do a video for that in the comments down below. So to quickly wrap up, I think my, t the team of, my team of the season has got to be Spurs. Although they finished second in the league, I thought they pushed Chelsea as far as they could. They didn't bottle anything because they were never ahead. They never led the league. They have got some real quality stars in their team and they've got a couple of real strong British and English players who perhaps could take England to the next level on the international stage. My sign of the season is Kante from Leicester to Chelsea, he's been outstanding. He's single-handedly, I would argue, won two titles in two years. Leicester and Chelsea have both benefited from his magnificent work ethic and the quality of winning possession back and recycling it has been really, really good. And now he's been linked with a move to Real Madrid, so you can see the progression of his career uh, has been amazing. And if he could go to a team like that and to win a Champions League, it would be amazing for him. I really like him as a player. Glad to have seen him in the flesh playing for Chelsea this season. I think the biggest flop of the season has got to be David Moyes at Sunderland. I think when he came in during the summer, I thought that it was a good appointment. I thought that he had probably the right tools to build a squad or build a team to get Sunderland away from relegation. But when you come out in August and say to your team that we're in a relegation battle, not, not the really the right message to send to them. My dark horses for a successful season next season is going to be Swansea City. I think that they've got a great manager in Paul Clement and I think they've got, if they can keep hold of Sigurdsson, if they can add a couple more players to their squad, if they can replace Ashley Williams, I think they've got the foundations of building something good there. And it's been a tricky season for them this season. There's been a lot of change, a lot of turmoil at the club, new owners and Bob Bradley and all that sort of stuff that happened before Christmas, but they've had a good end to the season, winning the last three games as well, which is outstanding, and not against Mugs, they've beaten Everton, they've beaten Sunderland, and, and they've beaten Albion. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, drop a like if you did, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more football content, and I'll see you soon.